guys welcome back to another video in my micro bakery today i wanted to share my full sourdough process with you from the start to finish so i start off by measuring the temperature of my kitchen and my flour sacks with my infrared thermometer i learned a simple calculation trick from master baker wayne caddy which helps to give you consistent sourdough every single time no matter the weather in other words, what I learned was temperature is king and crucial when it comes to managing sourdough fermentation. So firstly, I weigh my water in a large container and then I add in my sourdough starter, which I tend to feed the night before at a ratio of 155. So at about 5 p.m. the night before I mix my dough, I will feed my starter with a mixture of whole grain flour and strong white flour and scale it up to the number of loaves that I'll be making the next day. Which means that by 5am it's ready for me to start work with. So I add the starter to the warm water in my mixer and then my strong white flour and a little whole grain flour for my classic South London sourdough. So I want to do a quick shout out to Pleasant Hill Grain who I'm working with at the moment and they are essentially an online marketplace who sell all sorts of kitchen items, bakery items, mock mills, stone-based ovens like Campbell's RM2020 oven, the very same oven that I use in my micro bakery. So this is the perfect place, a one-stop shop for keen hobby bakers or those who are wanting to start a micro bakery like me. So definitely check out the link in my description box down below and let me know if you are going to join the RM2020 oven group too around the world. So thank you so much to Pleasant Hill Grain for working with me at the moment. And now back to the video. I mix this for about five minutes before adding in a second stage of warm water and sea salt. And this is something that I learned from Ursa Minor, a beautiful bakery I trained at earlier this year in Bali Castle in Ireland. So this second stage of water works really well with the wild farm flour that I use as it helps to strengthen and develop the gluten and also lets you control hydration more easily. I'm working at 80% hydration for this recipe. So once I've mixed in the second stage of water and sea salt, I'll mix for a further five to 10 minutes until I can see the dough peeling away from the sides of the mixer. And I also do the window pane test to see that I've developed enough gluten in the mix. I then let the dough relax for a little bit, maybe 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how pushed I am for time. Then it's time to transfer the dough from the mixer into my bulk containers. I fill these about a third full each and do two to three stretches and folds over the course of my bulk fermentation period, which I set at a benchmark time of three hours but this can change from day to day depending on the temperature of the room that you're working in. I dump the dough out onto my work surface and scale each of the loaves at 900 grams. 
gently forming them into rounds on my ply boards which I've dusted with rice flour. I let the dough relax for maybe 10 to 15 minutes before doing the final shape and this is another method that I learned at Ursa Minor Bakery. So again, there's many, many ways to shape bread and no one way is better than the other. It's just something that I learned there and I really liked how it improved the shape of my own sourdough and it makes for a longer, more oval shaped loaf rather than a really tall, compact loaf, um, which kind of tends to burst out a bit much. So I continue to shape the dough and place in the dusted wood pulp bannetons that I use. And then I pop them straight into the fridge for a long cold ferment overnight at one degree Celsius. In reality, my fridge does warm up quite a bit when I have a lot of loaves in there, but it does decrease after a couple hours. So don't panic too much um, if your fridge temperature increases massively. So the next morning at 5am, my RM2020 oven has been preheating since 2.30am and this is because I have a built-in timer which switches on the oven to preheat for two and a half hours um, and it's something that I'd highly recommend unless you are a fan of getting out of bed at 2.30am. I definitely did it a few times when I first got my oven but I was a zombie by about 10 a.m. and I definitely wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so I take my loaves out the fridge and place them on silicon mats and ply boards which come with the oven. I place four loaves per deck or up to six loaves if I've scaled them at a lower weight of 750 grams and then I score each loaf at a 45 degree angle. Then I measured the temperature of my oven stones with my infrared thermometer and I normally load the oven anywhere between 250 degrees Celsius to 265 degrees Celsius. I then load each deck with the loaves and spray each of the sides of the oven and over the loaves with a gentle spray of water from my water compressor pump that I just got off Amazon. The steam that you're injecting here means that your bread can rise to its full potential and the outer skin that's forming on the loaf needs to be able to expand and stretch before hardening off and creating a beautiful crust. So I then immediately turn down the temperature to 210 degrees Celsius upon loading each deck and I bake at this temperature for 20 minutes. I then open the door and release the steam through the vent and turn the heat back up to 250 degrees Celsius for the final 15 to 20 minutes of the bake until you have gorgeous golden brown loaves. I then unload the oven and let the loaves cool for as long as possible on my cooling rack before packaging up for delivery to my local customers and wholesale clients. And that is it guys, beautiful sourdough bread from start to finish in my RM2020 oven. Let me know how you get on, I really hope this was useful for you. Leave me any comments down below, don't forget to like, subscribe and I'll see you very soon for another video from my micro bakery. Bye guys!